Most people have never heard of antimony, and yet this rare metal quietly powers some of the most advanced military technology in the world. Imagine this. Missiles, nuclear weapons, high-tech electronic systems, all partially reliant on a single unassuming element. Now imagine that one country holds the keys to most of the world's supply. That's exactly the situation with China and antimony. On August 15, 2024, China announced that starting September 15, it would impose strict export restrictions on antimony, along with other rare metals and super hard materials. The official reason? To safeguard national security and protect critical technologies. But here's the kicker. This decision isn't just a local policy. It sent ripples through the global military industry, particularly in the United States, which depends heavily on China for antimony imports. In fact, over 60% of the United States antimony comes directly from China. Why does this matter? Because antimony isn't just another industrial metal. It's a strategic resource. If China tightens the tap, the United States could face shortages that slow weapons production, delay military projects, and even reshape global military power. In this video, we're going to explore why China made this move, what antimony really is, and why the United States and the rest of the world should be paying attention. By the end, you'll see that this isn't just about metals, it's about geopolitics, strategy, and global security. So what exactly is antimony, and why is it so important? At first glance, it might seem like just another obscure metal, but antimony has some unique properties that make it almost irreplaceable, especially in high-tech and military applications. For starters, antimony behaves differently from most metals. At certain temperatures, it exhibits heat shrinkage and cold expansion, meaning it contracts when heated and expands when cooled, completely opposite to what you'd expect. On top of that, it doesn't oxidize at room temperature, so it resists rusting and degradation over time. These characteristics make it extremely valuable for military equipment, where reliability under extreme conditions is critical. When antimony is added to other metals, it significantly improves hardness, wear resistance, and heat resistance. This is why many weapons, from missiles to armor-piercing shells, simply cannot be manufactured without it. But antimony isn't just for the battlefield. In civilian industries, it has earned the nickname Industrial MSG because it enhances so many materials, making them stronger and more efficient. It's used in semiconductors, lead acid batteries, photovoltaic cells, and even bearing gears. In short, antimony quietly powers both our electronics and our weapons, making it a metal that literally drives the modern world. Understanding these properties is key because it explains why China's export restrictions have the potential to send shockwaves across global military and industrial supply chains. Now that we understand why antimony is so special, let's talk about how rare it actually is. The world doesn't have an endless supply. Current estimates show that total global antimony reserves are about 2.17 million tons, and we mine roughly 83,000 tons each year. At this rate, if nothing changes, the proven resources could last only about 24 years. That's less than a quarter of a century, relatively short for a metal that powers both industry and military hardware. China is the undisputed leader in this field. It holds about 30% of the world's antimony reserves, nearly 640,000 tons. Other major holders include Tajikistan with 25%, Russia at 16%, and Turkey with 7%. Compared to China, these countries have smaller reserves, less processing infrastructure, and limited mining technology. This scarcity immediately turns antimony into a geopolitical resource, not just an industrial one. Countries that rely on antimony for military equipment or electronics can't simply ignore who controls the supply. When the stakes involve national security, even a small shortage could have major consequences. So, understanding the global scarcity sets the stage for why China's export restrictions are not just an economic move, they're a strategic one. Scarcity alone doesn't tell the whole story. Even countries that have antimony reserves face huge challenges in mining and production. Mining antimony is technically difficult, expensive, and honestly highly polluting. Many nations struggle to extract it efficiently without causing environmental disasters or, you know, wasting large amounts of ore. This is where China holds a clear advantage. Over the past decades, China has developed advanced extraction technologies that allow it to mine antimony more efficiently while controlling pollution. Its ability to reduce environmental damage and resource waste during extraction 
makes it far more effective than most other countries. Beyond mining, China has built a complete industrial chain, from raw ore to processed metal. This means it doesn't just produce the metal, it refines, smelts, and manufactures antimony-based products, creating a level of control unmatched anywhere else. In short, even if other nations have antimony reserves, China's technological edge makes it almost irreplaceable as a supplier. This dominance in mining, extraction, and environmental management is a major reason why its recent export restrictions are such a global game-changer. Having antimony ore is only half the battle. The real challenge is turning that ore into usable metal, and that's another area where China dominates the world. Currently, China controls about 80% of global antimony metal processing capacity. In other words, even if a country mines its own ore, it often has to ship it to China just to be refined and processed. To put this in perspective, China produces 48% of the world's antimony ore and handles 71% of global smelting. This processing capability isn't just a technical detail, it's a strategic advantage. Countries that want to manufacture military equipment, electronics, or batteries rely not only on the raw metal, but also on the processed forms that China specializes in producing. This creates a situation where many nations are dependent on China not just for resources, but for the technology and industrial capacity to make those resources usable. Essentially, China controls the full pipeline, from mining to smelting to industrial-grade products. So the next time you hear about China restricting antimony exports, remember, it's not just about the metal itself. It's about controlling the entire supply chain, which gives China enormous leverage over global military and industrial capabilities. China's dominance in antimony isn't limitless. In fact, its reserves and mining output are shrinking, which adds urgency to its recent export restrictions. In 2022, China's antimony mining volume was about 60,000 tons, but by 2023, it had fallen to only 40,000 tons. That's a one-third drop in just a year. This decline is largely due to overmining and years of large-scale exports, which have gradually depleted some of the richest deposits. Unlike other metals that are more abundant, antimony's rarity makes every ton mined a precious and finite resource. The global impact is clear. As China's production slows, the world's supply becomes more uncertain. Countries that depend on imports, especially for military and industrial use, face a growing risk of shortages and price spikes. This shrinking supply creates the perfect backdrop for China's export ban. It's not only about protecting national security, but also about preserving dwindling strategic resources for the future. Essentially, China is securing its long-term advantage while sending a strong signal to the rest of the world. On August 15, 2024, China made a statement that immediately caught the attention of the global military and industrial sectors. It announced that starting September 15, the country would implement strict export controls on rare metals, superhard materials, and related technologies with antimony at the center of this policy. The official reasoning was carefully worded. China stated that the measure was aimed at safeguarding national security, preventing the outflow of key technologies and strategic resources, and fulfilling its international obligations, such as non-proliferation agreements. Importantly, the announcement emphasized that the restrictions were not targeted at any specific country or region. This was a policy decision grounded in national interest and international norms. Yet the implications for the global market, and particularly for the United States, were enormous. China doesn't just supply antimony, it dominates both the raw material and processing stages, meaning that an export restriction isn't simply a slowdown in shipments, it's effectively a chokehold on the global supply chain. To visualize this, imagine the global antimony supply chain as a water system. China isn't just one of the pipes, it's the main reservoir and the pump. Closing the valve affects everyone downstream, from the United States military to electronics manufacturers worldwide. This announcement set off alarms in Washington. Military planners and lawmakers recognized that a sudden cut in antimony supply could slow weapons production, disrupt defense projects, and weaken strategic positioning. In effect, China's decision was not just an industrial policy, it was a geopolitical maneuver that could shift global power dynamics. The big question now is, how dependent is the United States on Chinese antimony, and how vulnerable is it if this valve is turned off? That's what we'll explore next. 
To understand why China's export restrictions matter so much, we need to look at the United States' reliance on antimony. The United States consumes roughly 30,000 tons of metallic antimony every year, and a majority of this comes from imports, making the country highly dependent on foreign sources. Here's a breakdown of the supply. About 63% of United States antimony imports come from China. The remaining 37% is scattered among countries like Bolivia, Kyrgyzstan, India, and Oman, along with smaller contributions from Australia, the United Kingdom, and Japan. While this diversification helps a little, it's nowhere near enough to replace China if supplies were cut off. This dependence creates a serious strategic risk. Imagine a scenario where a conflict or political tension between the United States and China escalates. Suddenly, the flow of antimony could be blocked, and United States military and industrial production could face severe delays. Weapons programs, missile manufacturing, and high-tech electronics, all critical for national defense, would be directly affected. In simple terms, the United States is like a factory that relies on a single supplier for a critical ingredient. If that supplier decides to stop shipments, production grinds to a halt. And because antimony isn't something you can quickly substitute, the impact could last months or even years. Next, we'll look at why the United States can't just mine or recycle enough antimony domestically to solve this problem, and why this dependency is even more concerning. At first glance, it might seem like the United States could simply mine its own antimony to reduce dependence on imports. But the reality is far more complicated. The United States has about 60,000 tons of antimony ore reserves, which is not insignificant. But most of these deposits are unmined or not economically viable with current technology. Mining antimony domestically would require massive investments in equipment, labor, and environmental safeguards, which could take years to implement. Even if the United States could ramp up mining quickly, there's another bottleneck processing and smelting the ore into usable metal. Unlike China, the United States lacks the advanced industrial infrastructure to refine antimony efficiently. Building these facilities from scratch isn't a matter of months. It's a multi-year, multi-billion dollar endeavor. Recycling antimony offers some relief, but it's far from a complete solution. Current United States recycling programs only meet about 15% of total demand, leaving a massive shortfall. In other words, even if recycling were maximized, the United States would still face serious supply gaps if imports from China were restricted. This combination of limited reserves, high costs, and technological hurdles means that the United States is extremely vulnerable. It simply cannot rely on domestic production or recycling to replace the crucial antimony it imports from China, especially in the context of military and strategic industries. Antimony isn't just a metal. It's a linchpin in the United States military-industrial complex. Many weapons, from missiles to armor-piercing rounds, rely on antimony for durability and performance. If the United States can't secure enough of this metal, production slows, which directly impacts the country's ability to maintain global military dominance. The economic stakes are enormous. In 2023, United States military equipment sales to foreign governments jumped 16%, reaching a record $238 billion, largely fueled by support for conflicts like the Russia-Ukraine war. Beyond this, the United States provides weapons to regions like Palestine, Israel, and other hotspots, making arms exports a consistent source of revenue. Simply put, the United States profits heavily from war-driven demand, and antimony is a hidden ingredient that keeps this cash cow flowing. If China's export restrictions disrupt the supply, United States weapons production could decline, reducing arms exports and profitability. This would not just affect corporate profits, but also strategic leverage, because the United States uses arms sales to maintain influence over allies and adversaries alike. In essence, controlling antimony isn't just about metals. It's about power, influence, and the economics of military dominance. Shortages could weaken both the financial and strategic position of the United States on the global stage. China's antimony export restrictions are more than an industrial policy. They're a geopolitical lever. By controlling such a critical resource, China gains tangible influence over the United States and its allies, essentially holding a sword over their military and industrial capabilities. Think of it like this. Antimony is a chess piece that can affect multiple moves on the global board. If China tightens supply, the United States may be forced to delay weapons programs, slow production, 
or reduce exports, which in turn affects its ability to project power worldwide. In regions where arms exports are tied to influence, like Eastern Europe, the Middle East and Asia, this could shift alliances and strategic calculations. Moreover, China's move signals a broader lesson control of strategic resources equals strategic power. Nations that dominate critical materials, whether rare metals, energy resources, or high-tech components, can influence not only markets but also national security policies of other countries. In short, antimony isn't just a metal anymore. It's a geopolitical tool, one that could reshape the balance of military power if the United States and other nations cannot secure alternative supplies quickly. From China's perspective, this export restriction is a strategic and responsible move. By controlling antimony, China isn't just protecting its own national security, it's also preventing the uncontrolled spread of sensitive military technologies. In other words, limiting exports can help reduce the risk of lethal weapons proliferation, which contributes, at least in theory, to global stability. However, there's a paradox here. While the move strengthens China's security and resource control, it simultaneously pressures the United States and other nations that rely heavily on Chinese antimony. This tension highlights a central truth in geopolitics. What benefits one country's stability can create instability for others. To visualize this, think of antimony as a strategic dam. China controls the flow of water, managing its own needs and reducing risks, while countries downstream like the United States must adapt to potential droughts in supply. The decision forces other nations to rethink defense planning, resource management, and industrial strategy, illustrating that economic and security considerations are inseparable in today's global landscape. Ultimately, this isn't just an economic issue. It's a strategic chess move with implications for military power, industrial security, and international relations. To sum it all up, antimony may seem like an obscure metal, but it plays a central role in global security, military power, and industrial innovation. China dominates both the reserves and processing of this critical resource, giving it enormous leverage over countries like the United States, which depend heavily on imports to maintain weapons production and global influence. The shrinking supply of antimony, combined with China's export restrictions, raises urgent questions. Can the United States secure alternative sources in time? How will this affect global military balance? And is China's move a strategic safeguard or a bold geopolitical maneuver? These are not abstract concerns. They have real consequences for security, economics, and international stability. Here's the takeaway. Controlling strategic resources is about more than economics. It's about power, influence, and long-term strategy. The story of antimony shows how one seemingly obscure metal can shape the future of global military and industrial landscapes. If you found this video insightful, make sure to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. We'll continue to bring you in-depth analysis of rare metals, military technologies, and global power shifts, so you're always up to date on the forces shaping our world.